Hi, thanks for checking out our channel. This is going to be a repair video on a Gallagher M800, the old style. But what we're going to have to do with this one, we're going to do two attempts. Depending on how things go, this first attempt, we may have to go to a second option. We're going to take, this is a, this version is about 25, 30 year old model here. The board was shot. Gallagher no longer makes a board for this model. The capacitor is good. So far, we believe the transformer is fine and the output board is good. We need to do a ground fault test on it, is what I call it. But I can't do that until I get the thing to stabilize and run right. So the main board's shot, and uh, so we have. So what we're going to? I'm going to try two different things. This board here is for the newer M800. Looks completely different from the old one, and you know the old one would slide in vertically down onto these tabs right here. And, um, well, they don't make that board anymore, so we're, they make a newer M800 now, and then it's been a couple, two, three years since they built the boards and parts for this unit. And we can usually retrofit a lot of things, but 90% of the time I can fix those main boards, but this main board that was in here, I can't figure out. I can't, I can't get it going. And so we're going to try to take their newer board and see if we can make that thing fit inside here. It's a little longer. We may have to position it a little bit differently. Um, if this isn't going to work out too well for us, um, we've got another board we can slip in that's a little bit smaller. Um, we'll physically probably fit in here better. Um, it won't take up as much real estate. And we'll have to modify that board to work with this one uh, because it, it doesn't have the same output as what this one is set up for. But um, here's our information about us. There are links down in the description area below. But here's our information right there. Okay, so what I got to do first, even if I got to use the other board, I've got to get this contraption, this thing right here, this terminal block deal. I got to get it out. I, this, it, there's, I can't set this down and like that the way it sits. It's, it's not going to work. Um, plus, I got to get all these wires. I got to get them positioned where I want them and be able to plug them into this board or that other board. So the first thing I need to do is start unplugging all these wires from the unit, from all these little little tabs. the way I usually do this, but I'm trying to do it. You take a flat screwdriver and put it around right the edge and just knock them off that way. Alright, so now to get this out, this thing here, we can break those things off. This thing comes right off. And now we've got to do this. We'll flip it over. We need a um, I gotta go do that. Hold on, I'll be right back. I gotta go grab, grab well, no, this might work. I got to drill out the center here on all four of those. I don't I don't have my regular drill with me, so I got my impact driver with and we're just gonna use it as the drill. There's a pin in the center of, of if each one of those let's see it's still locked in there so what we're gonna have to do with the we need I need a little bit bigger one so we'll take this drill bit Should be nope, not quite yet. Oop. Got that out of there. That thing's still in good shape. All right. So now get these bit of plastic here. So now I got, only thing I got to worry about. Is this capacitor, these wires this sticks out so far, there's so many component parts on that that I don't think I don't think this is gonna work. I don't think we're gonna make this it might be able to sit like that. I 
I think it's going to set up just a little too high. See, I, I can't trim too much of the board off. You can see there's traces on there that go to different things. I don't want to sit there and run and jump a bunch of jumper leads around. I want to, it's a perfectly good board. It's a brand new circuit board. I don't want to mess it up too much. I think it's going to sit too high. Let me go get the cover for this. Let me bear it back. I think it's going to sit too high to where. So then we got another thing we got to worry about is keep things from flopping around on the inside. So that's the other thing I'm, I'm going to run into. I don't think this is going to work. I mean, I'd love it to. I lo would love to try to make it work, but I don't think this. Um, I think that's going to be a viable option for us. I think we're going to have to go a different route. grab another board. Give me just, I'm going to pause it and come back with you in a minute. Okay. So here's what I got. I got two different boards and one of them I didn't even know I had. I got this board here for a Power Wizard PW6000 up to a PW12000. So this will, this can produce up to six joules up to output, up to 12 joule output, just depending on what size capacitors in here. So and this will physically uh, fit and here's a lot shorter. We'll have to figure out a way to keep the board from moving around because it could sit right there just like that. It'll probably turn it around like this because the AC power cord's over here and it would hook in right there. And I also got this board here which is a Power Wizard board of a different model. This is set up as a one joule board output so I don't know what the stored joules will be. But electrically, based on the capacitor combination and transformer combination that goes with this one, as it sits, this is set up as a one joule. But we can modify this board, pull two or three of these capacitors off, take this capacitor, solder it back here on the back side, and we could turn this into a uh, three or four joule output. Um, and which is, I think this is eight store joule, about four to five output joules, is what this one is set up as just from the factory standpoint of view. Let's see if how this board is sitting, if the thing will close. See, it closes, so it, it will physically fit. But you can hear it flopping around, so we gotta, we have to make sure that whatever we, however we put this board in there, that it's going to work. I mean, a guy could, the customer could go out and buy a brand new Gallagher M800, but the $400. So this board's less than half that, or less than, less than 100 bucks for that board right there. Okay, so now what? Let's, what we got to do is um, we got to start getting the wires plugged in where they need to go. So I'm see what wires I can keep and use and what wires I'm going to have to either modify or change or shorten or lengthen. So let's see. Another thing I don't know is is how well will this board play with the rest of the parts in it because this does have, you know, there are things you guys have to worry about will the board work with the transformer combination that, that it's got on there uh, let's see capacitor capacitor and where's the other transformer wire Maybe I'll run this just like that. Yeah, because this wire here has come off the capacitor. Electrically, the same spot as that one, which goes to the transformer. And look at the back side, those are both tied the same. So, 
yeah, that's going to work like that. So I'll see if we put this pass through like that. Put this board like that. Sit like that. Now we're going to get this power cord plugged into it now. So now we'll take Okay, where are you? Strip off just a little bit. Don't need a whole lot exposed because this is a going to take a little terminal block. small flat screwdriver we're going to oh, so now we're running into is that wire's making it kind of difficult I think I need to make, I'll plug, I'll do this, change this in a minute, I'll plug that, I'm going to make this wire right here longer, it's just, it's, it's, it'll work, but it's just making things kind of difficult for installing this thing, we may have to plug it in after the fact. wire will go right over here. I'm gonna make this longer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna get a longer wire. Ugh. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, this green one will work. Uh, Got my female spade connectors. That right there. Come on.
chuck some of these wires down inside here. Come on. Some green wire out of the way. Without it here in a minute, you can always tie it back into the neutral side. Okay, let's plug it in and should run, but hopefully it'll run a few pulls. Now, if it only runs for like 10 15 pulses and it shuts down, it quits running, and we've blown something on the board. Um, that's because this board not going to be good compatible with this unit. Let's plug it in, hopefully, it runs. Nice red light flashing there. It's running pretty good, so oops. Let's back this thing up a little bit. Oh, let's turn the light off, overhead light off, and we'll get a where we don't have a, such a bad glare. We'll look at that number there. That's going to be our output voltage and with no load. And with this transformer combination that this unit's got from the factory, it should be right around uh, between six and 7,000 volts. Oh shoot, hold on. Wrong setting. 7.4 kV. I was on the uh, pulse speed. What was the pulse speed? 1.4 seconds is its pulse speed. Its shock duration is 0.16 milliseconds. But peak voltage is 7.4 kV. Now let's run it through its paces here and see what output joules this is with this board in there. It's a 500 ohm load. We're at 5.4 kV, and the next number to the right is our output joules. We're at 5.2 uh, joules output. Let's go to 200 ohms. We're at almost 6. 4 kV at 5.9 joule output. I imagine we're going to plateau here in a minute. We're going to go to 100 ohm low. This will probably be past its, it's going to be past its threshold. Yep. Drop down to 2.7 kV at 5 joule output. So, so it's basically a 6 joule output unit now with, with this board in there. So now what I'm going to have to do is figure out a way to, to keep this board from moving around. Don't want to use like okay. What well, I think what I'm gonna have to do is there's a couple pieces of plastic down here. Come on. I'm going to have to chisel some of it. Well, not chisel, but remove some of it because I think it's getting in my way. We're Okay, 
that sits in there better like that all right so what i'm probably have to do to figure out a way to keep this board to stay in place as it move around too much i'll probably have to use a combination of, of probably some two-part epoxy along with some double-sided foam strips of tape that's a uh, thick heavy stuff or very high bond what they would call it that would keep this thing from moving around too much now it might wobble a little bit but if we can get inside these little grooves here that'll help keep it from rocking around you may put a little bead of epoxy up inside there just a little bit right at the corner there so if this thing ever does get hit by lightning we can still be able to get this board out and put a, put a new one back in there if we have to because these boards right here are plentiful easier to to obtain well I think I'm going to stop the video for now um, my part's done by getting it going again and doing some tests on it so all I got to do is some finish up work on the thing and we'll call it done I'm sure the customer's going to be happy and you know save them quite a bit of money from have to buy a $400 new unit because the rest of the unit's fine nothing wrong with it so until next time see you guys later on and have a good rest of your day